So today we're going to be taking that fresh look at Locus Zoom JS to talk about some of the less known interactive features. Um, and before I begin, this is a tool with a fair bit of history, which means um, there's just, here we go, sorry about that, quite a lot of people to thank for their work over the years. I don't think we could fit them all in one slide. Here's just a few names. Uh, it's a collaboration between both UM and our partners at the Bureau. A lot of great people have helped make this possible. Uh, so Locusim itself may look familiar from the publications. Um, it's a tool that's been around for more than 10 years. Uh, it's widely established as a way to show GWAS summary statistics in biological context of information in that region, or our GWAS uh, summary statistic region plots. Um, recently, we've been working on a new interactive version so that you're no longer limited in data sharing to the you know, handful of static snapshots that you could publish in the paper. Um, and this is an interactive version, an embeddable Locus Zoom JS widget. The key to making this plot is not just the visualization, but the data behind it. So we put some effort into bringing together information like the recombination rate track from the HapMap project. The, um, let's just make sure I can see this. Recombination rate from the HapMap project. Uh, genes in the region overlaid with genetic coordinates. Uh, from GenCode, and linkage disequilibrium from the Thousand Genomes Project and a selection of possible LD populations. Um, so together, these things can be overlaid in a single region plot and provide biological context for your results. Because this is a web-based tool, uh, these region plots are interactive. You can drag to pan, you can scroll to zoom the region, and if you click on a point, you can see tooltips with more information. These can include, as you see on the right side, links to external databases or pages, as well as interactive buttons that toggle specific features, like changing the LD reference variant in order to uh, recolor the plot appropriately. Um, the nice thing about the portal then is it's not just showing a single region plot, it brings together an enormous range of different data sets. So you can interactively select through the portal's drop down menus uh, and stack panels vertically to make custom comparisons between different phenotypes or different analyses within a data set. Uh, the last numbers I've seen suggest there are 80 data sets and 189 traits to choose from, uh, many possible combinations of options. In addition to summary statistics, the portal also provides uh, an inter interval track plot. So you can see chromatin state from the roadmap project and chrome-HMM analysis. You can see chromatin state either for specifically for a single variant or just across the region, as well as the taxic tracks and other things. And just like the data sets, you can interactively add these other annotations to choose which ones are most suitable for your research questions. Um, so as we've added more and more data sets, the challenge becomes how to summarize them. And for this, a phenome-wide association study plot, or FIWAS, becomes useful. This represents all the RP values for one single variant across a wide range of phenotypes. And using some clever method development from colleagues, uh, there is a bottom line analysis option. You can choose to show lowest p-values, you can show information from many data sets, or you can run this bottom line analysis that corrects for sample overlap to provide the best available information for each given phenotype. You can also compare that data sets in the portal to a FIWAS of a large data set, like the UK Biobank, uh, and you can put that in context as well. Uh, there are multiple ways to visualize this data available in the portal. And again, you can see this on the single variant information page. This is a forest plot that shows things in terms of effect size, confidence intervals, and negative log 10p across all the uh, bottom line analysis of phenotypes available. Um, and we've been really happy about how many features the portal's been able to bring, to bring in with this. And we're continuing to add more new features. So I thought I'd talk about um, either pending work or things in progress, or some things that the portal may already have integrated, like Maria suggested, 
in ways that you might not recognize. Um, but these are locus zoom methods that can interact with locus zoom in the future as well. Uh, the first most frequent feature request at ASHG was user selectable LD population. So now you can choose one of six different options uh, sourced from the thousand genomes. This is powered by some great work from our colleague Daniel here uh, with the new Michigan LD server, a nice reusable piece of software. Uh, so now you can click on this and dynamically recolor the plot uh, to choose the options most suited to your data or analysis. Uh, and that will be coming soon in Locus Zoom version 0 0.10. Um, we also want to add more biological context from other known information. So a new feature allows you to see individual hits in your study uh, and compare them to known uh, claimed significant results from the EBI GWAS catalog. Uh, one thing that's not clear in this static snapshot is if you click on one of those tick marks on the top track, it will now highlight the points on the other panels in a bright color uh, that for that um, step. This allows you to really bridge connections very nicely between different data sets and make more clear which SNPs are the same one, rather than just lining up an imaginary vertical line and hoping for the best. Uh, so the new GWAS catalog feature allows you to see how significant findings in your study uh, relate to claims of biological significance from all other known studies. Um, and for the next section then, We've really been looking at not just comparing to known research, but adding connections, uh, adding new information on the fly. So for that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Ryan, who's gonna tell you about some of our interactive analysis features. Uh, yep, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, if you can't, just say something in chat, I'll see it. Um, I'm gonna talk real briefly about some of the um, statistical work that we've done for Locus Zoom in the portal. Um, the, the first one here is this idea of calculating credible sets. Um, so, you know, the goal would be we want to show which variants in the region would be in the 95% credible set. Um, and so uh, we sort of implemented this existing method from Maller et al. 2012, the links there at the bottom, um, that lets us calculate this posterior probability of um, inclusion in the credible set just from the p-values that are available in the region. So we don't need any extra information. We can use what we have here. Um, so we go through and calculate phase factors and, and calculate the final posterior probability. Um, and, then, uh, and then we can have Locusum display that in the region. So let's see if I can. The, uh, so you can show which variants are in the credible set, yes, no, or you can color them by um, their contribution, their basically their posterior probability. Um, this is an example of a region where you know the signal is kind of spread out. So in this example here, you see you know the, the inclusion probabilities contained within only a few variants. Um, and then in the next example, you know, you could see one where we don't really know there, there's quite a few variants that have a fairly, uh, even probability of being in the set. Um, and then I think there's one more example here at the end. Yeah. So here we have a very fine, uh, you know, inclusion probability there. So um, Locusum, as you saw here, has all the interactive kind of features here. You can change how you want to display. When you pan and, and zoom, the credible set calculation will happen um, you know, instantly for the region you're, you're looking at um, and, and then you know, color appropriately. Um, and the, the last point here what was important was to make this kind of method when we were working on it be modular so you know this library that we developed for doing this you can plug it into locus zoom and locus zoom can take advantage of and show these things in the plot you could also separately take that functionality and and use it in other places and then one uh example of that on the portal i went too far so on the portal actually there was already 
existing infrastructure for um, showing the, this kind of thing, showing credible sets, um, you know, from pre-calculated results. And so they were able to take this and actually plug it in and use those, uh, you know, routines to calculate credible set posterior probabilities for variance in a region and show them in table form, as you see here. So this is on the, the gene page for everything with TTD. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is one of the methods we worked on for the portal. Uh, the other thing that we were working on recently um, was aggregation tests. So these are tests where you have a number of rare variants that you're not powered to detect association for, and you want to group them together um, in order to, to test them. Um, so uh, kind of similarly to credible sets, we developed a library that can calculate these aggregation tests like burden and scat um, from summary statistics. And this library can be used in Locusum to display the results, and it, it can also be used in other places. Uh, and we'll show you an example of that um, on the portal. So here, if, if, in, if we're using it in Locusum, um, we can have Locusum show you the results of the, all the aggregation tests that were run in a region. So on the right here, you see you know, one gene has been highlighted in red. That means at least one of the aggregation tests that we ran was significant. And it updates you know, this table here that shows you um, the genes of the region and your mask, which is just a grouping of how the variants were grouped together um, and shows you, you know, what test was run and what was the, the p-value for that, for that test. Um, and this can happen interactively as you're, again, as you're panning and zooming and driving around. Um, also not shown here, we have another table where you can see single variant statistics um, and sort of look and see, hey, is my test driven by a, likely a single variant or was it really a, you know, a significant aggregation test where it's, it's a few rare variants that are all collectively uh, contributing to the result. Um, and so this, all of this, um, this functionality for calculating aggregation tests is in our library. It's called rarametal.js. It's on GitHub. Um, and you can also see some of the, some of how that works um, in one of our locus in demos here at the link uh, below. So on the portal, again, there's already, you know, existing infrastructure for actually computing or running burden tests, doing custom aggregation tests. Um, and so they're able to, to take this library and plug it in there um, to allow people to, to try, you know, running different tests. Um, so they have a UI, this is just a little part of it that's available, but there's a UI for selecting, hey, what variants do I want to put into my aggregation tests, say protein truncating, uh, maybe variants that only have a certain minor allele frequency, um, and then it will show you what variants it's going to use, um, and then run the run the test and, and show you the, the p values and the results. Um, so uh, the library that we built will run burden scat bt and scat o uh, on um, summary statistics, so score statistics and covariance matrices. And these are you know summary statistics that are um, easy to share um, and uh, you know, are, are pretty common in many meta-analysis kinds of studies. Um, in the future, we're, we're hoping to also add into the same libraries, uh, conditional analysis, so conditioning on any variant in the region, um, and in the future, possibly also allowing for meta-analysis. So, you know, if you had multiple sites um, contributing statistics, we could run the meta-analysis um, right there in the, in the web browser and show you the, show you the result. <coughs> So uh, this is also on the gene page. There's a high impact variance tab. If you click on that, then you'll see the custom aggregation test uh, button and you can, you can try running all of these uh, different tests. Um, so one last piece here of, of new functionality that we've been working on um, is this ability for Locusum um, in the browser to actually update other elements of the page as you're viewing Locusum. So you could be panning around in Locusum and have a table on the, on the page that updates with what you're seeing. 
So as an example here, maybe, you know, you have a table of P values and effect sizes and uh, credible set posterior probabilities. And as you move around, the table will automatically update um, based on what you're seeing. And then you could download those uh, statistics um, to your computer. Um, and we've had this kind of functionality for a while to download things, um, in particular downloading uh, SVG images. So you could download, there's a button, you hover over the plot, you can download an SVG um, of, of what you're seeing. So you can capture both the plot and the data um, that's being displayed uh, on the plot as well. So I think that's that section. Andy's going to talk again now about how to plot um, in LogoZoom with your own data. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, so we've been really happy with how many data sets LogoZoom has been used with so far. And as you've seen, there's a lot of new features coming. Some of these we want to try out before sending to the portal. And some of them we just want other people to be able to use LogoZoom with their own early stage research as well. So this is a modular and reusable library. You can drop it into any web page. It's built on standard technologies like uh, D3, SVG, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, that means it will work on many different kinds of websites uh, in many different use cases. It's a configuration-driven library, which means you can build new kinds of visualizations with control over point, size, shape, color, all the interactive features you've seen so far can be customized for your use case. Uh, we also have on the back end uh, standard API servers that provide common data like genes for builds GRC H37 and build 38, um, which means you can use this on a wide range of data sets. This is a permissive open source license so it's used in both industry and academia across a number of different sites and in-house analysis tools. We always welcome questions or contributions on getting started. Um, we also recognize that not everyone wants to build their own web server to visualize their GWAS. And so we've been working on lowering that barrier to entry or how much is needed to visualize data. Um, again, this is a test bed for new Locus Zoom features. Uh, as well as using some ideas inspired by our work with the portal. Um, the first of those tools is called LocalZoom, which is a way, without uploading your data, to quickly make region plots uh, from Tabix summary statistics that live on your hard drive. This uses a lot of the stuff we've shown you in the last section, including credible sets, uh, selectable LD population. You can connect to a FIWAS plot um, from the UK Biobank. You can export your results as a table for analysis. Uh, this is all done in the browser and supporting comparisons to multiple data sets. Um, sometimes, though, for a very large data set, you want a little bit of help interpreting it. Uh, so if you upload our, your um, data to my.locuszoom.org, a new hosted upload service uh, that was released at ASHG last month, um, without needing to tab it or um, summarize your file, you can get information annotations like uh, top loci, nearest genes, uh, Manhattan plot, and summary sum for your entire study. You can click on any of those points and get that same view that you just saw in local, local Zoom to really explore with a wide range of analysis tools and dig into your data. Uh, this new website allows you to share your um, analysis only with trusted collaborators or you can click a button and make that data set public to foster comparisons with other research, uh, published work. We have uh, 50 or 60, I want to say, sample studies up there right now uh, to see how this works. Um, and again, we're continuing to develop these tools. We actively solicit feedback, and we really, we really try to build this with modularity and reuse in mind. The nature of research is we don't know how people will use our tools, and we're trying to support a broad range of possibilities. Uh, so here are some places on GitHub where our code is available, again, under permissive open source licenses. Uh, and with that, we're happy to take any questions you might have, uh, suggestions, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. I see we have a few questions on the chat already. Awesome. Don't agree on every night.
in our lab. Um, okay, so the first one was from Carl. Um, is it possible, seamless, to add community contributed plugin tracks? We do have some mechanisms, yes. Uh, the software engineering answer is look at Zoom maintains a uh, registry of uh, features. So if you load the library, you can load an extension. We actually have several extension modules in our repo, most notably credible sets uh, that demonstrate the principle. You can create like prepackaged custom analysis tracks and data sources, and then a JSON serializable configuration object that finds that plugin and automatically uses it to render the plot. So there is extensibility built in. And we even have demonstrations of how to get started with it. Great, okay. Um, the next question from Elisa, I can answer. Can these slides or resources be available on the portal or through email? Yes. Um, we are recording the webinar and we'll make the recording available and we also can make the slides available. Um, and resources, um, I think most of the, the locus Zoom resources that, that uh, are not on the portal that, that Andy just talked about are available through Michigan website. All right, well, for those who have not taken the survey, I encourage you to do so because I think it would be really valuable to hear what you are thinking and using on the site as we um, revive it and develop over the coming years. Um, we have the next webinar is scheduled for January, mid January. So that'll be in the new year, 2020. We'll have a December release and um, we'll have, we'll probably focus that one, as I mentioned before, on the software stack. I'm really talking about how you might interact with the portal through API. I think that is a, a nice area that would be of interest to a lot of so different community of people as well as the users that we have here in the community. So look to that. And um, you can see the resources that Maria mentioned. This will be posted to our resource page for a video um, for you to access at any time. All right, with that, um, thank you for your attention.